All right, good afternoon. My name is uh, Sean Lubner, and I'm in the Mechanical Engineering Department and Materials Science and Engineering. And uh, I'm going to talk about reducing CO2 emissions below zero. Uh, but before you do that, you have to get it down to zero. And so that requires completely replacing fossil fuels with renewable energy. And we've made great strides towards that. But one of the largest barriers currently still preventing us is the lack of very large scale energy storage, because there's a huge timing mismatch between supply and demand of renewable energy and when we need that. So this requires very inexpensive, very scalable energy storage. And there are many approaches to this, uh, but one that I'm particularly excited about and have been working on is high temperature thermal energy storage. So the idea here is that we are developing a material that stays solid up to very high temperatures over 2000 degrees Celsius. And it has just the right amount of electrical conductivity so that you can thermally charge it using electricity, which you can then get from wind power, solar power, nuclear power, even fossil fuels. You can then hold that energy very efficiently for long durations of time. It becomes self thermally insulating as you scale it up. So you actually don't lose much energy to the environment. And then it becomes dispatchable. So your energy came from renewable sources, but you can dispatch it on demand when you need that energy. And you can either dispatch it directly as heat, which is actually how, as a country, we use most of our energy. It's as heat, and often very high temperature heat for things like materials processing. Or if you want electricity, you can also convert it back using a heat engine. Uh, and what you pay for in efficiency, you make up for in price. So we estimate this could lead to a system level, uh, levelized cost of storage, less than three cents per kilowatt hour, which is enough to make renewable energy competitive and actually displace fossil fuels. It's also very energy dense. It's about one megawatt hour per cubic meter of active material. So it's very scalable to gigawatt hour scales. Um, it's incredibly safe. Uh, heat cannot explode. It's the only form of energy that doesn't want to turn spontaneously into heat because it is already heat. Um, and there's no geographic requirements. You don't need a, a height elevation difference or particularly sunny weather, so you can put it anywhere. I'm also interested in small to mid-scale energy storage. So these are things like uh, batteries and fuel cells for portable electronics and electric vehicles. And here, we're working on creating these thermal wave sensors that can be used to map subsurface properties non-invasively of these different devices in real time with a sensor that lives on the outside. So uh, I'm happy to tell anyone who's interested a lot more about the capabilities, but for example, on the left, these sensors can be used to map the spatial distribution of thermal transport throughout a battery from the outside, which is very important to understand how thermal runaway effects happen during fast charging. Or as shown on the right, uh, we were able to map the spatial distribution of lithium ion concentration throughout the thickness of a 70 microns thick anode during fast charge to show the accumulation of steep lithium gradients, which can then lead to other failure modes. And then finally, we want to get it down below zero. And so this requires actively removing carbon from the atmosphere. We're going to need to remove about 10 gigatons of CO2 per year for many years just to avoid catastrophe. And the good news is we already have technologies that do that. The bad news is it takes about the amount of energy that the US uses in electricity per year to just pull out one or two gigatons. But then the other good news is we're about a factor of 10 off from the theoretical limit thermodynamically. And so one of the other projects I'm working on is developing more efficient systems and materials to extract carbon from the air and try to get closer to that limit. Thank you.